Hello everyone, I have a merch store in support of my channel with designs I created on t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, tank tops, mugs, mouse pads, stickers, and phone cases. Please visit the Jet Ski Pilot Gaming Store at Design by Humans or my other store at TeePublic. Links in the video description. Dragon's Lair. Hello and welcome to this unboxing and review of the new Wave Toys Replitronics Dragon's Lair Mini Arcade Machine of the 1983 Classic Game. As I pick up this, we do have the comic books for Dragon's Lair based off this game. This box is really unique. If you look at this closely, this is the replica of the actual shipping box that the full-size Dragon's Lair machine came in when it was first shipped to arcade establishments in the 1980s. As I point right here, this is the actual dimensions of the full-size arcade machine. This started out as a Kickstarter project. I backed it as I did with their previous mini arcade machines, as you can see lined up on the left hand side of the screen as I unbox this. To my surprise, there is an adhesive tape securing the box flap, which New Wave Toys normally hasn't done with their previous releases. There it is, you can see the adhesive tape. I have to say, New Wave Toys packaging is top notch. There's an outer shipping box as well as a replica shipping box that we just opened up. And you can see there's another box that contains the mini arcade machine itself. Their packaging is outstanding in that when the arcade is shipped from the factory to the consumer, it should arrive in pretty good shape. I'm really pleased with their packaging. As you can see, there is also a protective plastic wrap covering the box. For collectors who want to ensure the box is in pristine condition, it's a welcome addition, for sure. I know after the initial backer units were shipped out, it was made available on New Wave Toys website for everyone else. Those units sold out very quickly. I know there was a second batch in limited quantity being shipped for a restock, which I'm sure will sell quickly as well. So if you want to grab one, don't hesitate to buy one before they are gone. You can see the back has all the features listed in English and other languages as well. As I spin the box around, the really cool thing I noticed that I love is a dragon on the bottom of the box. It is this green fire breath from the dragon wraps around the box from the side to the front and to the other side. And there is a dragon's layer logo on the top of the box. The box opens up from the side similar to the outer shipping box. It's a real nice surprise to see there is a, the classic Dragon's Lair poster artwork with Dirk and Daphne behind the side opening flap. I gotta say, New Wave Toys adding art in this spot. You would normally assume no artwork would be there. Definitely gotta give a little golf clap to New Wave Toys for doing that. first item I'll take out is the USB charging cable. It does have a built-in battery similar to the other Replicade mini arcades. And here's the instruction manual and some extra items. We'll cover that here in a bit. This is a bonus item New Wave Toys included for Kickstarter backers. It's a coin slot keychain made of metal. And as I pick this up, I'll compare it with another bonus keychain I got for back in Centipede which was New Wave Toys first release of their mini arcade line. As you can see, the differences are one is darker than the other. And the first keychain is 25 cents and the Dragon's Lair one is 50 cents, which is what is the cost to play the game in the arcade. That's a really nice detail. As I touch this, you can see it does have a built-in light. The first item to look at is the sticker of Daphne, which some people have stuck on, on under their coin door of the mini arcade machine, which I'll probably won't, but here's the close-up look at it. They also include nice little replica coins made of plastic, which are normally included with all 
The Mini Arcade Machines by New Wave Toys. Again, another close-up look. The next item may be a mystery for some folks. New Wave Toys included a stick-on blank cover. If you prefer to cover the Replitronics logo on the coin door, which is not the original logo on the full-size arcade machine, due to licensing issues, New Wave Toys was not able to put on the Cinematronics logo on the coin door. There is the Laserdisc. We'll go over that here in more detail. But first, for those who are not familiar with Laserdisc, here's my Laserdisc a copy of Star Wars I've had when it first came out. I used to watch movies on Laserdisc back in the day. Since this is a Laserdisc based game, it would make sense New Wave Toys would include it. The disc label even has such little details as a Dragon's Lair title on it. Protective film on it, on both sides of the disc, you can remove. Let's look at the manual. It's pretty bare bones. It includes the features in English and other languages. Once again, the packaging is well done in that the unit is placed in a secure protective styrofoam and is wrapped in plastic to prevent any damage to the unit. It does have some nice weight to it. And it does have rubber feet on the bottom along with the copyright label that's in color. Now, the details on this unit are remarkable and it definitely looks like the full size arcade machine in miniature 1 6 scale form. No details were left out for sure except the Cinematronics logo on the coin door which they weren't able to include due to issues I mentioned earlier. So if you're a Dragon's Lair fan, this sure would be a pride and joy in your collection. We'll take the film off the scoreboard. And as you can see, there is a scoreboard above the main screen, which was included. Looking at the marquee, you can see it's an exact replica of the original marquee. Even the control panel with push buttons, joystick, and artwork are recreated with utmost attention to detail. The side art is nicely done as well. The fit and finish is very good. You can see there are two speakers at the top, along with a power switch, volume dial, charge port, two USB ports, and HDMI port. Below is a drawer that contains an actual replica of the Laserdisc player, as you can see here that played the animated game on a laser disc that was in the original full-size Dragon's Lair arcade machine. There's even rubber pads on the bottom of the player. The addition of the Laserdisc player and Laserdisc is bar none and A plus in my book. There's even a player remote control included. Yeah, the attention to detail and even including the Laserdisc player you would normally not see deserves another golf clap for New Wave Toys. What other company would do that? Not many, I'm sure. There's even a placeholder for the remote control on the player. Let's slide this in. Before we show gameplay, here's a Replitronics logo you can cover up with that blank stick-on cover if you desire. Also, the coin door opens if you want to store things in your mini arcade like the coins included with the unit. I remember seeing the cinematics for the first time I saw Dragon's Lair in arcade when it first came out. Dragon's Lair, the fantasy adventure where you become a valiant knight on a quest to rescue the fair princess from the clutches of an evil dragon. You control the actions of a daring adventurer finding his way through the castle of a dark wizard who has encountered it with treacherous monsters and obstacles. 
In the mysterious caverns below the castle, your odyssey continues against the awesome forces that oppose your efforts to reach the dragon slayer. Lead on, adventurer. Your quest awaits. I also remember people who are wanting to play any game in the arcade would line up their quarters along the edge below the screen, as you can see there, to be the next player in line to play the game. I'm sure I was guilty of doing that as well. Now let's take a look at the menu screen, which is really nicely done. You can change a lot of different options before you start playing the game. You can turn on and off the marquee light if you want, change the credits, or even the screen brightness, game audio, track mode audio, and even the difficulty level. Now let's take a look at gameplay. Dragon's Lair has quick time events where the player has to move the joystick at certain cue points in the action to proceed further in the story. It's been a while since I played Dragon's Lair, so be warned, I'll be dying a lot and demonstrating a brief overview of gameplay. Another great option is using the two USB ports on the back of the unit to connect one or two controllers. As you can see here is the Street Fighter 2 controller I have that came with the New Wave's Toy Street Fighter 2 mini arcade machine. I have two controllers since the New Wave Toys sold them separately as well. If you prefer to play on the big screen, you can use the HDMI output. One thing to note is the screen on the unit will turn off as soon as you connect the HDMI to output to a big screen. Overall, I'm very impressed with this Dragon's Lair mini arcade machine. I'm glad I backed this outstanding product via New Wave Toys' initial Kickstarter campaign. This is another example New Wave Toys definitely does well in replicating a very authentic experience from a full-scale arcade machine in small scale in playability as well as a collectible piece. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Please do consider subscribing, and if you have, thank you very much for all your support. Please don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified of future videos. Until the next one, take care.